Biologists often announce that a certain kind of animal has been found capable of using tools. This usually refers to something like using a stick to hunt for ants in a log or a stone to crack nuts. But such announcements are completely unsurprising since all animals use tools. Birds build nests, fish hide in the mud to escape predators, and squirrels use buildings as shortcuts between trees. If an animal executes its purpose by means of an external physical object, then that object can reasonably be regarded as a tool. Which one of the following most accurately describes the role played in the argument by the claim that the biologist's announcements that a certain animal has been found capable of using tools are, are unsurprising? So the claim, so which one of the following most accurately describes the role played in the argument by this claim? So let's first just find the claim. So we see it right over here. They say biologists often announce that certain kinds of animal that a certain kind of animal has been found capable of using tools. This usually refers to something like using a stick to hunt for ants in a log or a stone to crack nuts. But such announcements are completely unsurprising. So let me let me underline that. But such announcements are completely unsurprising. So that's what they're talking about. The biologist announcements, the claim that biologists, the claim that biologist announcements that certain animal has been found capable of using tools are unsurprising. So what role is that having in this, in this argument? So let's just think about it a little bit. They're saying that, okay, biologists make this announcement. They're usually around an animal using a stick to hunt for ants, but they're unsurprising. And then they say, all animals use tools. Well, all animals use tools seem to point to this statement. So it seems to back up this. If you believe that all animals use tools, then you would say that such, un you would agree that such announcements are, un are completely unsurprising. And then later, they talk about birds build nests, fish hide in the mud to escape predators, and squirrels use buildings as shortcuts between trees. If an animal executes its purpose by means of an external physical object, which all of these are examples of, then that object can reasonably be regarded as a tool. I don't know if I agree with that statement, but let's just go with it a little bit. This is the author trying to back up this notion that all animals use tools. So this red part backs up, tries to give evidence for all animals using tools, this idea that maybe all animals are using tools. So the red part seems to back up this this notion that the author has that all animals use tools, which seems to back up what we underlined, which I would say is a conclusion. This, the, the, the idea that these announcements from biologists are completely unsurprising. So I would say that this right over here is the conclusion. Here they're talking about what is unsurprising, and then they're talking about that this, you know, they find it unsurprising. And then everything else is backing it up, this backing up this conclusion, but saying, hey, look, all animals use tools. And they kind of go into examples and definition of what it means to use a tool that backs up this idea that animals use tools. So let's look at the choices to see if any of them coincide with what I just reasoned through. It provides evidence that the animal's activities given as examples are purposeful. No, what I underline, this is what we're trying to, we're saying what role does this underlined part say, this notion, the, the, the biologist announcements that certain animal has been found capable of using tools is unsurprising. This isn't providing evidence, so I would, I would mark that out. It's, it's making a conclusion, as, as I said before, that something is unsurprising. It is the conclusion of the argument. Yep, <laughs> that feels exactly, that feels exactly right. It's not in support of other things. It is a thing that other things are supporting. All right. It is, a, it is an assumption used by the argument to justify acceptance of a broader conception of what a tool is that has, that usually accept, than that usually accepted by the biologists. Well, the way that this argument is structured, it does finish with this non-traditional definition of a tool. So sometimes you might just superficially say, hey, maybe I'm building to a conclusion. But this argument is not built that way. That definition was a way, that definition in conjunction with these examples is used to support this idea that all animals use tools, which is used to then make the conclusion that those announcements are unsurprising. So I would rule that out. It calls into question the basis of the biologist's conception of a tool. No, that, the part that I underline definitely doesn't do that. The part that I underline is the part that's saying, hey, it's unsurprising. 
It addresses a weakness in the biologist's announcements that stems from their ambiguous use of the word external. No, it doesn't. It's not pointing to a weakness in their in their argument. So I wouldn't. It addresses a weakness in the biologist's announcements that stems from their ambiguous word of the use of the word external. No, it's not. Trying to point at the ambiguity once again, it's trying to make a conclusion that's unsurprising when biologists say that some animal or another has, has been using tools. So I definitely like choice B.